Happy Monday, COP family, and welcome to your message recap. My name is Larisha Johnson, and as always, it's an honor to welcome our very own Elder Cindy Kane. How you doing? I am well. Good to see you both. Uh, good to be with our family and our friends. Excited to delve into what God has for us today. I am. I, there's there's one question in particular. It's the last question. I'm not even, it's no spoiler alert, but I, that's the one I can't wait to get to, family. So, <laughs> so hang tight. It's going to be a good discussion. But before we do that, we want to welcome the man of the hour, our very own pastor, our bishop, Lovelace. How are you doing, sir? I'm excellent. Excellent, excellent. It's always a joy to be with both of you and with those who are viewing. All right. So before we jump in, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping to remind you that you can visit our website. That's www.cop.church. And you can also download our mobile app. That's where you can stay connected to everything happening at the center, events that may be happening, omni groups that you can join. Um, and those are really small for those who may not know. Those are smaller groups, connection groups where you can uh, have connection beyond Sunday and through the week and through the month and just connect with other believers and, and walk this life out together. Um, there are Bible study resources as well that you can tap into. You can download sermon notes, replay messages, message recaps. So a lot of good information and just inspiration for you as well. So make sure you're plugged into that. And with that out of the way, we're going to dive into this week's discussion. Uh, we are in part two of our teaching series, The Guarantee of the Holy Spirit. And this weekend's teaching is entitled, What God Has Joined Together, and that is part of our overall theme for the year, which is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And before we dig in, I want to give you a few scripture, scripture references you want to jot down. Uh, the first is 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18. And then you're going to be in Ephesians 1, verses 7 through 12. And then you'll jump down to 15 through 19. And then you'll flip on over to Ephesians 2 and uh, focus on verses 18 through 22. And again, all these resources are in the notes as well. Um, and so I want to start by reading um, 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 17 and 18, um, before to kind of help us set us up for this first discussion point, um, because it's it's one of the things you brought out in, our, in the teaching very early on, Bishop, in that um, you said that Holy Spirit has come to liberate us and to transform us into the image of Jesus. And 2 Corinthians 3, we'll start with 17, reads, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And the first thing, um, Bishop, I wanted to talk through is if you could help just kind of talk to us about that connection between freedom through God's spirit, transparency, and transformation. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the text that you just read, um, the, the context of it, uh, the background of it addresses a scenario or an account, not so much even a scenario, it was an account, an actual account that took place in reference to Moses, the prophet. And Moses uh, has this encounter with God you know, for 40 days and 40 nights, and he comes down from the mountain, and the glory of God is upon him, and his face is shining and glowing, and again, to what extent and how it radiated, we know very little outside. It had to be something quite significant because people were afraid. They knew that there was something supernaturally that had occurred and had taken place in his visitation with God. And it says that Moses uh, veiled his face uh, in, the, in the scripture there in 2 Corinthians 3. He put a veil over his face but the inference is given so that the people would not see the glory fading off. Mm -hmm. But the reality was he put the the, the uh, veil, whatever aspect of veiling that he did, to uh, protect uh, or to cause people not to be afraid so that he could be among the people. But then at the same time, so that they would not see that the glory was fading. Mm -hmm. And the... You know, there's lots that can be surmised from that. We want to be careful 
not to get into his mind mm -hmm. and try to figure that out without him being able to tell us specifically what that was. But as we we can look at it in regards to how does it relate to us today, because the, the fact was the letter of the law brought death, but the spirit brought life. He brings that out. The letter of the law was death, but the spirit brings life. And so when he brings the passage out in the verse where he says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It is a direct contrast, uh, uh, putting on one side the law, uh, mm -hmm. which we could not keep, which brought death. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord, which brought freedom which brought hope so that we could experience really the totality of uh, the experience of salvation, the experience of life in God, walking with God and so forth. But now it, it moves us then into this, this discussion where when we speak of the, the, the freedom that we have, uh, it denotes that we look now at uh, the context is the word of God or the counsel of God, mm -hmm. uh, the, the very essence of God. Now we look and in looking, we are beholding mm -hmm. the, the imagery as in a mirror. That's, the, that's the, the imagery that he's given as though we're holding a mirror up, but we're holding this mirror up and we're looking at this image and the mirror does not lie. Mm -hmm the mirror is going to reflect what it is that is appearing before it. It's not going to lie. Mm -hmm. And he built all of this thesis now on that we are walking in freedom in the spirit, that the law was death, but the spirit brought life. Now we with, here it is, unveiled faces, the, the ability now to take the veil off and with transparency set aside our fear of what others may think, mm -hmm. set aside the fear of what we may think, set aside whatever causes us to put the veil on. There, you, you have to choose what makes you put your veil on. Okay. And in choosing and deciding why we have the veil on, now have the courage to take the veil off mm -hmm. and see within this imagery who we are mm -hmm. reflected in that mirror and realizing that we are, what, what, what appears in that mirror is the imagery of Christ. We are being, the more we look, the more we, in that freedom, the more we are being transformed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. That The, the problem we have is getting folks to look. Mm, yes. yes. Because we don't want to look because we're shamed. We don't want to look because yeah. of feeling we'll be judged. We don't want to look because mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the guiltiest of them all? I am. Yes. <laughs> and then. God says, no, look, look again, look again. And as we look into his word and his righteousness and the liberation that comes through the Holy Spirit, we now begin to see the Holy Spirit is doing the work of transformation that is bringing us into looking like Christ. And because he is doing that, the more we look, the more we're being transformed. The more we look, the more there's transformation, there's transparency, the more... I look, it is less of me looking at me, but looking at what Christ is doing in me. Mm -hmm. And that is where, again, most people, uh, myself included, a lot of us, if we're not careful, we get stuck. We get stuck with just not looking mm -hmm. because the law says you can't look. Mm -hmm. The law says you can't behold it. The law says you're unworthy to behold it. But because of the blood, the veil, you remember when Jesus rose from the dead, the veil that was in the temple was split from top to bottom. And a lot of people felt that it was split so that the glory of God could come out. I argue that the, the veil was split so that we could uh, enter into with full access into the presence of God without 
any hesitation, mm -hmm. that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, again, it's so that we can enter in, not just so that the something happened where the glory was coming out, but we we are his glory. <laughs> we are the work of his glory. And so therefore, again, we behold not our sin, not our uh, mess up, not our failures, not our mistakes, but the more we look, the more we see the work of the Holy Spirit who is transforming our lives. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh my goodness, that helped me. I don't know about y'all, but that was for me. Look again. Ooh, thank you, Bishop. Again. Mm, thank yeah, you. because as you were speaking, Bishop, all I could think about was the longer I'm looking at my shortcomings, my sins, my failing, then I'm looking at what I can do to remedy it, to uh -huh. fix it, to get holy again. I can't be looking at Christ then, right? Like I'm just yeah. looking at me then. Mm -hmm. And that is bondage. That is, that is bondage because you will be on that hamster wheel. You will continue to beat yourself up. You'll continue to fall short. You know, why God? And then if we just fix our gaze on Jesus. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because, and then as I'm focusing on Jesus, I don't at the same time, he's transforming me. Right. Yes. But I'm not focused on, on that part. I'm just looking at Jesus. Next yeah. thing I know, well, yeah. oh my God. Right. I, I'm not responding the same way I used to. I'm not flying yeah. off the handle in, in, right. anymore. I'm not, I'm not shameful anymore. I'm right. not envious anymore. I'm not driven yeah. by my ego anymore. But yeah. that only comes by focusing our gaze on Jesus. Yes. That's it. That's so good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is freedom. There, yeah. We that used to freedom. sing a song. We used to sing a song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. The more you look at his glory and look at his image, the more we become his image. Mm -hmm. And the less of those things of bondage, they, they have no more dominion over us. Sin has no dominion over us. Fear has no more dominion over us. Uh, all of those things, uh, fear, which is a tormentor, mm -hmm. has no dominion on us. We are entering it out and we're looking at his image in us and beholding his glory, which is us which is us Ooh. yes and like you just gave us like <clears throat> like that's the remedy right because you know during this week or during this month right we'll fall back to focusing on ourselves the remedy is so quick because religion uh the enemy will tell us the cure for that is just work harder than just yep. pray better or just serve more or just do did it up right but no no like the he is the remedy. He yeah. he is the remedy. Just yeah. just come back, right? Realign yourself. Yeah. Um, because oftentimes I wonder, you know, sometimes it feels like it's not even like a radical shift, right? Oh. It's just we've just slightly went off course. Yeah. yeah. Right. And even then you're like, oh, I can't face God. And you're like, Ooh, yes, why not? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on back. Just yeah. scoop back over, scoop yeah. back over and get back in looking at his face. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And that's, that's the freedom. freedom. That's, that's the freedom. freedom. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I told you. I told you. I told you. I just, this, it's just so, and we, we, we say that. And again, that's why I can sing your praises all day long, Bishop, because you just share rich teaching with us in a way that we just, it, we understand deeply and that we can apply it deeply and we Praise can not, God. we know it in such a way that we could share it with others. Like, let me tell Praise you what God. I know that I know that I know. Yeah. 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 Rich teaching that I don't take for Praise granted God. that everyone is receiving, but it's, again, it's in such a way that, you know, my nine-year-old can, can take yeah. it and run with it. So I just appreciate that. And, and one yeah. of the things you brought out just in piggybacking on what we're talking about is how Holy Spirit helps me to see again, how good Jesus is, not how bad I am. That's right. Mm. And that leads us into the next talking point, Elder Cindy. I wanted if you could just help us just talk through being okay with feeling good about the transformation that we are seeing. And, and again, that was the question I asked for me through the help of the Holy Spirit, because I think sometimes I'm speaking for me, you know, or you think, you know, how far you have to go 
that you don't take time to just really stop and just thank God for the change that you are seeing because, oh, well, okay, that's great. But, you know, there's so much more, a bigger gap I have to fill that I think anyway. But just talking us through being okay with looking in the mirror and feeling good about what we're seeing. This question, I kid you not, was like my daily work for years, years and years and years, right? It, um, And I think about, Bishop, what you said last week, how... God will share his glory with us. Yeah. And so it is okay. It is that okay, I'm gonna tell you now, that was freeing in of itself because um, and I know this happens to Larisha as well, but I'll run into folks from Center of Praise either at services or at the Level Up Conference or at Safeway, frankly. And someone will make mention of the message recap. Oh, you know, and they're very kind. Everyone at COP is very kind. And my natural inclination is all glory to God. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be used of God. All glory to God. And so you saying that and tying into this question, like reminds me, it is okay. Like I am thankful that God uses me, that he, yeah. right? I'm th And even in that moment, what I was getting ready to say was, oh, even in my raggediness, God still wants to, you know, like, I, I can't, it's it just so... <laughs> like ingrained it, yes. it, you know, I don't have to add that part to it. Right. No. I, am, no. <laughs> I am thankful that God uses me and yes. how he does so encourages and blesses others. Right. Yes. It is okay. And so when you, so when I started this Larisha with like, this was my daily work, there was a time I it was at a, I was at a different church and I was serving. And I mean, every week it was, Oh God, why did you choose me? Oh God. I, I mean, it was, that is bondage. I have to tell you y'all that I was at that church for years and loved it. It was wonderful. And I'm glad to be used, but that was bondage because I just never felt I was worth it. And, and not only that, but I felt that like, I was supposed to not feel like I was worth it. Like I was, you know, I was a good Christian because I was, you know, pushing away God's glory when he's like, here, I want to share it. I want to share it with you. And I'm just pushing it away. Nope, nope, I don't want it, God. No, no, oh, poor is me. Oh, 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 you know, all, all of that. Being being free, thank you, God. Being freed from that, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And 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 and, and, and you're right. I know, you know, I'm I know I'm not where uh, you know, God's full purpose is, you know, and all all of that, but good gracious, like. I am thankful for what God has done. And I can say that. And that's okay. And that's not, you're right. That's not being prideful. That's not being, that's, yeah. it does not. And, and I realize this, I, it does not honor God for yeah. me to diminish what he is doing in me. Yes. He gets no yeah. honor from that. None. Yeah. None. Yeah. So, so then what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> right. What am I doing? I, I, this was freeing. This the last couple of weeks. Even yeah. my response to people this past week when I would see them out, out, out and about. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Praise God. Thank you. I'm so yeah. thankful. Yes, Amen. thank you. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. how. You know, I think about um, my uh, former uh, Sunday school teacher. We always got it confused. I couldn't remember if she was my Sunday school teacher or if her husband was my Sunday school teacher, but I claimed her as though she was, and that was the late um, Mother uh, West, uh, Cornell West's mother. And uh, she was so funny when I was, uh, many of you in the community would know her as Irene West. Uh, there's an elementary school in Elk Grove named after her. She was a great educator uh, in the Elk Grove uh, school district. But I remember every time I would be in her presence and I would say something, you know, along the lines, oh, mother, you are such a blessing. I just love you. And she would always stop. And there was a phrase she stated. She never would say, oh, just give all the glory to God. Now, she obviously knew that it was God who had enabled her to be who she was in my life as an influencer, but she would say these words. She would say, oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. Bless you, baby. Bless you, son. Bless you. Oh, oh bless you. And I started thinking about that. I taught a lesson years ago at the church. I've never taught it at the cathedral to my knowledge, but it was years ago. 
uh, probably 30 years ago or so, I talked about how we have a thank you basket that we offer to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. And that thank you basket is filled based upon what people see within our lives as being an evidence of blessing for them. And we receive it and put it in the basket as an offering of thanksgiving to him. Mm -hmm. So I started telling people, don't give God an empty basket. I remember teaching that. At, don't, at the end of the day, don't lift up an empty basket as an offering. Lift up a basket that is full of those, you bless me. Mm -hmm. Lift up that basket that says, you touch my life. Receive it and then offer it to God. Receive it because the person many times who is saying it to you, they may not stop and say, thank God, you know, they may, we want them to see our good works and glorify our God who is in heaven, our father, but they may not. But whenever, whether it's somebody in the grocery store, what have you, when someone tells me, I really appreciate you, I put it in the basket. Here's what I'm saying to you. Our, our, the glory of God that shines in our lives and works in our lives the glory of God informs our praise. We're praising him for the good things he has done. And it's okay to praise him for the good things that he has done through you. We act like the good things that he has done is outside of us. And usually we have twisted it just to be that we are a benefactor of those good things. Could it also be that others are a benefactor of the good things that he has done through us so that we offer that as praise to him as well. Lord, I praise you that somebody said that they were blessed today. They were touched by my testimony or were touched by my care for them or the ministry of the word today. When I worship and praise God throughout the rest of this evening, it will be, Lord, I give you praise that people say that their lives were touched and transformed, that there was a change. You see, there was a young man I saw yesterday from our Miracle University. To my knowledge, he is not necessarily attending the church, but he came down the hall at the Legacy Center and uh, saw me there, and I've never met the young man to my knowledge. He just knew I was the bishop. And he said to me, he said, hi, bishop. He said, bishop, Keep me in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers. And I had to just stop and say, Lord, I thank you that he sees something in me that would lead him to say, keep me in your prayers. Uh, when I have somebody working at my house, like another young person who was working here a couple of weeks ago, and I said, man, I appreciate how you take care of my yard and his comment to me was, well, I'm just trying to get where you are. Mm -hmm. Well, now I can give God praise that he sees something in my life that he can model after. And, and that opens the conversation for me to be able to tell him, this is the Lord's doing. All good and perfect gifts comes from the Father above in whom there is no variance. Yeah. And so what I think Elder Cindy is saying, and I just concur, um, and I said it in the message, I said it in the message, um, when I look in the mirror, I don't see condemnation. Mm -hmm. When I look in the mirror, I see transformation. Mm -hmm. And because I see transformation, when I see something that's looking good in the mirror, I start primping. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm like, know. I'm like, whoo, God has been good to you. Yeah. Ooh, Look where the Lord has brought you from. Boy, you better go ahead on with your bad self. You know, what am I doing? Am I prideful? No, no, no. Because I know where I came from. Yeah. I think pride is a much deeper construct than most of us present it. We think that being able to pat ourselves and say, good job. We think that's pride. We think, but Pride is much more deeper. Pride is a total rejection, mm -hmm. a total rejection. It is having the form of godliness, but denying the power. Mm -hmm. It is rejecting the power. Mm -hmm. It's Listen, 
pride, it is something to be watchful of, but not to the extent that we nitpick every part of our being. I don't want to be prideful. I don't want to be prideful. We're scared to have a nice place because I don't want to be prideful. We're scared to get a nice car because I don't want to be prideful. I, that means you are measuring whatever it is that you have been blessed with based upon the perceptions of others mm -hmm. and what they think or what they feel. That's pride. Mm -hmm. That's pride. But to be able to say, I like my car. Mm -hmm. I love how God has blessed me with my home. I thank God he gave me a good job. I thank God my children are blessed. I love how he is just working in it. That's not prideful. Prideful is when I remove the element of God and think it's all me. Mm, that's so good. And it really plays itself out when you begin to do the very thing Elder Cindy has been saying, when you begin to focus on your works mm -hmm. and you praise yourself, mm -hmm. you focus on your ability and you praise yourself. But let me reverse it. When you focus on your works and you fail and you judge yourself, when you focus on what you're not doing right instead of what he did right, that's pride. Ooh. That's pride. When you focus on the fact that, oh, God, I just don't believe you can use me. Oh, when I get myself together, then right. God's going to use me. That's pride. That's pride. But for me to say God is using me, God is doing a good thing in me. I'm not where I used to be. That's mm. not pride. That's that's informing your praise. Ooh. What was Elder Cindy doing earlier today? <laughs> you know, I'm running my mouth over here because I get so challenged by that. When we 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 think by putting ourselves down that that is elevating that that is life, that is not where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we do that to other people too. If you do it to you, it real it becomes real easy to do it to other people. Yeah, or or the opposite. We're or the opposite. quicker to, like you were saying earlier, Bishop, about looking at yourself in the mirror and say, well, look what God is doing. Okay, all right, you got, God put you together. We'll say that to our friends and like, girl, look what God did and Sir, okay, well, I see what God's doing in your life, sir, but we don't extend that to ourselves. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, I'm telling you, Bishop, this teaching is so helpful. So helpful. Okay. Well, because it's a form, it's a really, and it's sad, and I know this sounds strong, but it is a form, sadly, of self-hate. No, self-hate. We have, we're, we're hating ourselves in such a way that we're not able to love ourselves and receive love that people are even scared to say i love myself well the scripture even teaches love your neighbor yes. as thyself yes. you know but we're afraid to love ourselves we're afraid to care for ourselves we're afraid to you know to be able to celebrate ourselves and uh so we we master putting ourselves down Instead of mastering it, celebrating the beauty of what God has created. I'm in his image, his image. And, and that's part of the problem. We we put ourselves down because we don't see ourselves as the image of Christ. That's we it. We won't look in the mirror. Yeah. We won't look in the mirror. Yeah, we won't look in the mirror. We don't see ourselves as the image of Christ. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You believe that's for everybody else? Yeah. That's not, yeah, but not for us. I, I, I'm going to have to do a part two on this Sunday. And yes. I think what I'm going to do is break out my Morris Day mirror and walk around. <laughs> I'm going to break my Morris Day mirror out. Oh, my gosh. I'm done this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you that I'm Bishop. If, if if the Lord needs to do a part two, I'm telling you, it's just, yeah. that's just so profound. It's so, yeah. and, it, and again, it goes back to looking in the mirror, not shying away from that, unveiling our face. We would yeah. unveiled face. Behold yes. the glory. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I have to just say, like, we don't, I, I love how you pointed out, Larissa, that we'll offer that to others, but not to ourselves. Oftentimes, because we don't like see, like, we don't think we're worthy of it or, but like, God thought we were so valuable, Come you on. know, like, I, you know, and so he, we were so valuable he put all of his power 
right? We learned that at the beginning of the year into our salvation. All if God thinks that of me, mm-hmm. why would I not? Like, yeah. again, I'm not even honoring what God did because he put everything into me, right? And we accept that for salvation, but don't realize that we can accept that for like our day-to-day walk, right? Yeah. I can accept, me accepting what Christ did on the cross for me wasn't just so that I would go to heaven. Thankful for that. But that that's because then I know how, how to see myself in my daily walk. Yes. That was the gift of salvation. That came with Calvary. Yes. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. And he never gives in proportion to the need. Oh, that was so good, Bishop. He gives oh, in proportion you. to his provision of That's his glory. Sir. <laughs> thank you for saying that. Yes, sir. Ooh. No. Exceeding. That wrecked. That wrecked. Exceeding <laughs> abundantly. Above. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't give, yeah, oh. he doesn't give he doesn't give in proportion to the need. Oh, you got that need? Okay, let me just meet that need. No, he gives in proportion to who he is. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Woo. Okay, if we don't get to this next question, we're not gonna make it, y'all. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord. It's so good. Oh, we're going to go back to, we're going to close out our last question with reading uh, through 2 Corinthians uh, 3, 17 and 18 again. This is going to set us up for our last discussion point. And I just love this this passage of scripture. Um, Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. And I really could not wait to get to this this question, Bishop, and and just having you just help us unpack this idea that uh, we need a constant infilling of the Holy Spirit, which I think for a lot of us who've who've been under your teaching for a while, we've come to um, understand that and grasp that and, and really embrace that the infilling is a constant uh, infilling. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. this infilling is is constant of the Holy Spirit because of an increase of glory that we see in our lives, not a, not a decrease. So if you could just yeah. help unpack that for us. Yeah, because uh, we have to know the, the biblical language of when we talk about be filled with the Holy Spirit is a constant being filled, continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. And it really came from a, I can't say it was a conversation. It was actually a criticism that someone gave in reference to one of the speakers, one of the teachers at Center of Praise. And uh, they were challenging the teaching, which in essence, I agree with the teacher on it. They were challenging the teaching of there being a constant feeling. And what they were getting confused was, I believe, when we talk about the baptism of the Spirit, which seals us, they were saying, I have been filled, E.D., and I don't need to be filled any further. So they were arguing that point down. They, I don't need to be filled any further. Uh, I'm filled as, as much as I'm going to be filled. And I said, that's fine. If that you Where you want to stop? But I said, that is not what we teach. As a congregation, we believe that there is one baptism, but there are many fillings of the Holy Spirit. And as I prayed about it, and I thought in reference to responding to that individual, I said, ah, I see why they probably are saying what they're saying, because they're thinking that in their mind, when we say continuously being filled, that there is something that is subtracted or uh, being removed And they're interpreting that I'm saying that it has to be replenished. And uh, that's the only logical concept that I could come up with why they were the pushback and so forth, you know. And uh, but again, not getting into their head, the reality, if we just to state the fact, is that when we speak of the infilling, it is not to suggest that the Holy Spirit himself, here it is, that he has degrees of how he works in us. Mm -hmm. You got it together today, 
I'm filled. You don't have it so much together today? Mm, let me take some of that. <laughs> you minister healing today? Something went, we get it confused. We say virtue went out of me. Well, if power and virtue went out of you when you ministered, could it be that, how should I say, did it go out of you hmm. or did it go out of Jesus? Yeah. You know, and if it went out of Jesus, does that mean he had less power to heal if somebody came to him five minutes later after he touched the woman with the issue of blood? I don't think so. <laughs> Because if you recall, he was on his way somewhere else yeah. and he was still healing people. So I don't think that when we talk about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, that it is denoting the Holy Spirit going up and down like a thermometer in us based upon our circumstances or based upon what we're doing. But rather, here it is, the Holy Spirit is moving from glory in this and to glory through this and from glory from glory to glory, even to the point that it's a constant filling. Glory to glory, glory to glory, glory in marriage, glory in singlehood, glory in raising our children, glory in taking care of our business, glory for school. It's glory to go, not decrease, so I got to get filled again. No. I've given you what you need and I'm going to give you what you need and I'm going to give you what you need. It's similar to what he did when he fed the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness, he gave them manna for the day yeah. and quail for today. In fact, he gave them manna and he says, and make sure now I'm going to give you more than enough, but eat your field, but yeah. don't let it sit around and spoil because I'm going to give you some more tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to give you some more tomorrow. It wasn't like they turned around and said, well, we ate all this manna today and we need, oh, I can't wait till 6 a.m. tomorrow when the manna trunk come by. <laughs> you know, they, he didn't turn around, they didn't turn around, oh, we only ate all the quail for today. We can't wait till some more quail. He gave them what was needed, glory. And then the next day, glory. And then the next day, glory. <laughs> it wasn't a decrease. In fact, they had more than enough. They had more than enough. So I just believe that God gives us now what we do with it. Sometimes we don't always use the glory yeah. the way that we need to use it. We decide to take a break and, and get in the flesh and act, you know, I'm just, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like believing. I don't feel like walking in the word. That don't take his glory away. Woo, finish up. I'm being transformed to <laughs> take his glory away. The, the glory of Moses was fading because of the law. The glory of the believer today is increasing and expanding because of the Holy Spirit. Bishop, you said, I'm being transformed. So he's not taking the glory away. That just... If I'm being transformed, obviously the glory is doing what it needs to do. <laughs> oh but gosh. I think it's so counter our natural thinking mm -hmm. and so counter our, at times, our analytical approach. We think that it's got to be put together like this, like this. And God says, sometimes I'll do the changes and they're so subtle. And sometimes you have to look back and a couple of weeks, like Elder Cindy said, you'll look back about two months later or six months later and say, you know, when I think about where the Lord has brought me from, that situation would have thrown me yes. last year. Yeah. But I'm sitting here, I'm like, let me give you an example. And I'm going to hush up because I'm getting all excited. But yeah. I'll give you an example. There was a man right here at, uh, at Center of Praise who had his car broken into during the conference that we had. And unfortunately, he had put some valuables within sight. He didn't use the wisdom and put them within sight. And the person broke in his car in broad daylight. Broad daylight, 12 noon on a busy street and took everything. Okay. But now here's what's interesting. 
At eight o'clock that morning, this same individual was at the eight o'clock prayer. And the woman of God who was leading us in prayer, Sister Natalie Lewin uh, Spicer, uh, Lady Natalie Lewin Spicer, went and prayed for him. And this individual was curled up on the floor, <laughs> like in a fetal position, yeah. because the power of God had come on them so strongly yeah. that later, four hours later, they will find out that their car had been broken into. And this is what this individual said to me. He said, but Bishop, when I tell you, when I walked out to the car and saw all that glass and saw all of my equipment removed, he said, there was a peace of God that was so over me. He said, any other time it would have wrecked my world. But the prayer that was prayed over me and the glory of God that came upon me, he said, I've never felt the presence of God like that upon myself and i said look at god look at god mm, yes beholding his image through transformation mm. when we talk about freedom it's not just freedom from sin that's a huge piece of it but it's freedom from ourselves mm -hmm. Ooh, good yes our own self bondage, our own fears, our own frustrations. That's the freedom. I'm just, I'm free to look. All I, I can't get past it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such, Bishop, as you were speaking, all I was reminded of is that it's just a reminder there is literally no lack in God. There's no lack. And oftentimes we hear that preached talking about money or cars or houses and that kind of stuff and whatever. But like, there's no lack of, God's not, mm, there is no good thing that God is withholding from his yeah. people. He's not withholding peace from us. He's yeah. not withholding glory. He's not withholding his joy. Yeah. He's not withholding it. In yeah. fact, he has so much of it. Yeah. He can't run out. He can't yeah. run out. So all we have to do is receive it. No. That's it. That's it. No negotiations, no back and forth. Why are you doing this, God? I didn't, no, no, I, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah. And I can receive it freely, not fearful that I won't get it tomorrow. That's right. Right? So That's I'm just right. gonna receive it freely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Abundantly, it, oh Abundantly, goodness. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Uh, that's good. We good, Elder Cindy. I'm not afraid that I won't receive goodness tomorrow. Oh, that's good, Elder Cindy. Right? Because sometimes, oh my goodness, like we can walk around, like, you know, um, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop yeah. or things are too good to be true. Like and all that stuff we tell ourselves instead, I don't have to be fearful about what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't have to. Yeah. yeah. Instead of embracing the fact that surely, mm. That's it. That's a whole nother message. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life. Follow sure. us. Oh. Yes. Now I'm doing follow what us. Cindy does. I can't, I can't, I can't. This is the new <laughs> hand movements, y'all. That means I'm done. Yes. And this is oh. so good on so many levels, but I think it's it's just so timely as our God is because of everything happening in our big world and in our individual worlds and what you hear in the media is telling us everything that's not good that's not full of peace or joy or you know but we can we get to hear this word to remind us like no 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 there still is goodness and mercy and it's still following you yes i heard the news too we know what's going on but mm -hmm. still surely goodness and mercy that's just so yeah. so good oh. it and that frees us because then I don't have to spend all of my time chasing after goodness or chasing after, right? I, I think about this years ago, a friend of mine on like New Year's, they posted like, you know, their New Year's affirmation or whatever. And he said, you know, I'm going to chase after happiness or chase after joy or whatever he said. Mm -hmm. And I get it. But like, why would I run after that, which is already following? You're just going in a circle. Now you're just tired. Now you're just tired. 
Yeah. Right? It, that, that's not sinful. That's just a waste of energy. It's already following me. Yeah. yeah. It, we'd be amazed at how many times scripture affirms the aspects of things that follow us. Goodness and mercies. These signs shall follow those who believe. Just the constant things that just follow us if we just step, take the step of faith into the reality. If we just look at what is happening in the transformation. You see, that, that that's the, the blessing. You don't have to chase the glory. <laughs> the glory is there. You just, people don't want glory chases. You ain't got to chase his glory. All you got to do is just behold. Uh, That'd be like a dog chasing his own tail. Come that's on. That's what it is. Yeah. Go around and around and around and around. You ain't got to chase. Just, just behold. That means pause. Look. Yeah. Settle in. Rest in that. Behold it. Behold the transformation. Behold the glory of the Lord. Don't cover it. Behold it. It ain't going to go nowhere. Behold it. It ain't going to fade away. Behold it. It oh didn't bring death. It came to bring life. That is just not letting me go. It's not letting me go. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do a part two Sunday. I'm going to have to call who is Thank scheduled you, for this. I'm going to call a person scheduled for this this coming Sunday. And tell them, you're going to have to step aside. I got to do part two. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we believe Holy Spirit is saying there's a part two. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll use my bishop privileges. This is and, and they won't mind. They'll say, please, please. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do have to unpack this a little bit more because I could tell for a lot of this, a lot of individuals, it was deer in headlight moment, you yeah. know, and they were looking like, could this be? And there are other passages that we can look at that will bring affirmation to it even the more so. So y'all just be in prayer and let's, and you that are watching, you all be in prayer. Those that are watching, be in prayer that God will just continue to give us revelation and take the, 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 the you know, just his word and just open it up to us. And let's just go deeper. Let's just go deeper. Be prayerful this week as you're preparing your heart to receive the word that God will just cause your heart to embrace this. It won't be just a good message, but it will be something that really will, as uh, Elder Cindy and, and the Elder uh, Minister uh, Larisha have said, it will cause you to walk in transformation and celebrate the change that is in you. Celebrate it. But I'm not seeing enough. Celebrate what you do see. <laughs> Celebrate what you do see, you know? I don't feel, it's not a matter of feeling, it's a matter of what's happening, you know? I don't always mm -hmm. feel things, but I know something's changing. I know that. And 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 I, I want us to just, as a, as a church family, as those who are friends of our church family that follow this ministry, really just said, Lord, help me now to just, tap into what you're doing and through your word and revelation. Uh, he says the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, we want that so that we can walk in the fullness of what the Lord has for us and not be afraid. Behold, behold, you, you can behold. The blood has made it possible for you to behold. <laughs> the blood. Hmm. Bishop. We will be in prayer because we need a part two, but we're going to be in prayer and we can see what Holy Spirit has to say if the Holy Spirit agrees, but this is so rich, so rich. Oh. Well, I'll give you a preview of a coming attraction. You ain't got to call heaven down to earth. He's already made that connection for you. You just got to walk in it. Okay. I'm walking out the door. My door right there. That's my <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's already happened. It ain't got to come down and it ain't, we ain't got to make it go up. All we got to do is walk in what he's already, what God is doing together. Oh my goodness. Elder Sandy. Yes. Just pray, just pray, pray, Elder, pray. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Bishop. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for, um, as Mr. As Minister Richard just said, God, this rich, rich world, word, God. God, we thank you that this word is living and it's breathing and it is causing our lives to be transformed. Father, no longer will we look at uh, our own reflection, God. No longer, God, will we have our focus on our works, 
our, our, our ability, God, to meet whatever standard God we've set. Instead, God, we're going to focus um, our attention. We're going to focus our gaze, Father, on you and you alone. Thank you, God, for the transformation in each of our lives. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit who lives within us. God, you did not Mm, thank you, God, that when you left, God, you did not leave us alone, Father God, but we get to walk out this life with the assistance of the intercessor and the Holy Spirit, God. And for that, we say thank you. God, we are so thankful um, that we get to call on you, God, and God, we get to receive, Father, behold all that you have given us. God, thank you there's no lack in you. God, thank you that we can rid ourselves of a scarcity mindset, God. We can rid ourselves of the fear, God, that you're holding something back from us, God, or that you're going to take something away from us, God, or that somehow, God, it's going to vanish, God, or somehow we'll be pun. Thank you, God, that we can be free of all of that. Thank you, God, that we will close our ears off to all of the condemnation from um, God from the enemy. God, we will even close our ears off to even those things we tell ourselves, God. God, so many of us, God, are repeating those same narratives and those same mantras, God, that are rooted in religion. God, they are rooted in fear, God, but we thank you that, that whom the sun sets free is indeed free, God. So we thank you for that freedom in you. God, we will focus on what you are doing, God, in our own lives, God. As we celebrate, God, what you are doing in our brother and sister, God, we will do that for ourselves. God, we, 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 we know, God, it doesn't give you honor, God, when we shrink down, Father, God. So we're going to embrace all that you are doing in our lives. God, we are thankful now, even in advance, to see the transformation, God. God, we know that we're going to witness it even with our own eyes, but we thank you that we also, God, get to hear about the transformation in the testimony of your people. We're so thankful for that. And God, we are being transformed, God, not just for our own benefit, God, but we are being transformed so we can be an example in the world, God, so others can be drawn, not to us, God, but they'll be drawn to you, Father, God, and then they will be transformed. God, thank you that we get to play a part in the work that you are doing in the earth, God. We count it um, an honor, God. It is a privilege. Father, I thank you so much, God, for our pastor and Bishop Lovelace. God, pour back into him as he has so graciously, God, poured back and poured out to us. God, we thank you how you give him a word for um, this specific body, God, and it meets our specific needs. God, we, God, we recognize not everyone gets this, God, and we are so thankful that you have chosen us in this time, in this season, God, and we thankful, we're, we thank you. We thank you, God, that he is going to receive rest. God, we thank you for each and every person who is viewing, who is sharing this video, God. God, we know that we have the opportunity, God, not just to minister with each other or even with our own church family, God, but this gets to carry out through the world. And we're very, very thankful for that. God, thank you for each and every victory that we will win even on this week. God, we love you and we praise you and we count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Elder Cindy. Oh my gosh. Thank you again, Bishop. We just, we're just, we're just so grateful for you. you. I'm thankful for you all. It's a blessing. Thank you so much. And family, we're thankful for you. We're, we're so grateful that you're on this journey with us. If there's anything that we can do to be of assistance, to be in prayer with you, in agreement with anything, or there's testimonies you want to share, we want to hear it. Reach out to us at prayer at cop.church. You can also reach out to us on our socials as well. That's at Center Praise pretty much everywhere, whatever social platform, that's where you'll find us. Uh, if there's questions you have about this particular recap or other recaps, you can uh, send your questions into social media at cop.church, and we will do our very best to answer every question, and we may answer a few while we're on live discussion. Um, I think that's it as far as housekeeping goes, but again, I'm just so very grateful for Elder Cindy and for Bishop Lovelace and for you, family, and until the next time, look in that mirror and behold the glory. <laughs>